So very happy to see all of you. So what we'll do is that uh, I'll do a little kirtan and uh, a short lecture and then um, a little question answer and then I can meet all of you after that. I mean, as we are, I can talk to each of you. It's also being streamed on the Facebook so we can Hare Krishna Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Girivaradhari Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Girivaradhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha, Gopinath Radha, Gopinath Radhe. Jaya Radha, Gopinath Radha, Gopinath Radhe. Jaya Gauranitai, Jaya Gauranitai, Gauranitai, Jaya Gauranitai. Jaya Jagannatha, Jaya Jagannatha, Jaya. Bala Deva Jaya Subhadra Jaya Jaya Prabhupad 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhupad Nitai Gora Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Nitai Gora Hari Bol Gaur Premanande Jayom Vishnupad Paramahansa Parivrajaka Charya Stotrasat his divine grace of Hacharanar of Inda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada ki jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda ki jai Nitai Gaur Premanande Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga ki jai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadam Mahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Scha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Vitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanepyo Vaishnavepyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी विथ ऑल ऑफ यू अगेन इन सिडनी इट्स बीन अ वाइल एंड द रीजन आई वॉन्टेड द वीडियो स्विच टॉन इज सो आई कुड सी हाउ हैप्पी और अनहैप्पी ऑल ऑफ यू आर सो it seems all of you are very happy in your krishna consciousness and that is showing on all your shining faces so yes and naturally because all of you are wonderful devotees so you have to be happy you have no choice but to be happy the material world will always bring challenges never a dull moment in this material world never a time when you can say okay now i'm done with my problems never that time will never come so relentlessly one after the other oh. sorry for the facebook viewers um the zoom link has been disconnected so i don't know what happened So please bear with me till I join them again. हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा आई डोंट नो वॉट हैपन सम टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम ओके ओके एवरी वन इज बैक अगेन ओके हरे कृष्णा सो वॉट वॉज आई सेंग yeah so this material world will have so many difficulties coming one after another we should never expect that there will be peace in this material world and more often than not these difficulties will come unexpected out of the blue padam padam yad vipadam natesham sometimes they are foreseen and sometimes they are unforeseen so uh, one has to always prepare that is the message of the new year you know in this world there are different kinds of people some people are pessimists they will always see the negative side of things some are optimists they always see the positive side of it and some are realists they see the reality of the situation so what should we be we should be optimists but our optimism should be based in reality not in illusion so if we are optimistic about being happy in the material world that optimism is futile it is ignorance because it is based on something that is not true but if we are optimistic about uh, our spiritual future if we do our krishna consciousness nicely then uh, that is optimism that is based on reality on realism so we should all be optimistic yes but basing our optimism on reality as is given in bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam so simply being pessimistic can uh be a very big dampener for our spiritual enthusiasm so we should always try to generate some positive energy so a pessimist might say when you wish him happy new year 
So he may say, well, what's new about it? The same old, same old thing. Year before last we had something, this year we had COVID, next year we'll have something else. So yes, indeed, that's the nature of the world. So in one sense, there's nothing new in the material world. It's all the same. So from that point of view, the pessimist is right. Because there's really nothing new. It's the same birth, death, old age, disease, padam, padam, yad, padam. You know, always some calamity lurking around the corner, about to strike you when you least expect it. That's the way Krishna has designed this material world. So there is some truth in what the pessimists say also. But taking a pessimistic approach is not conducive for our mental well-being and for our enthusiasm to pursue our spiritual life. So the, uh, one of the symptoms of uh, advanced devotional service is called Asha Baddha. Asha Baddha means that, you know, to give a loose English translation from a famous English poet, hope lies eternal in the human breast. So which means that one is always hopeful of the mercy of Krishna. One continues to strive for Krishna's mercy and then is always positive, optimistic, hopeful that yes, Krishna's mercy will come. Hmm? So in the new year, what will be new for us? Substantially nothing from the material point of view. COVID may recede, it, whatever may happen to COVID, but there'll be other problems that will come up. In the, in the material world, which is compared to an ocean, there will be waves of problems coming and going. Just the names, shapes, forms, sizes of the problems may change. Give it a different label. Today you call it COVID, tomorrow you call it something else. But the nature of the material world doesn't change. But what makes the material world really livable and really uh, tolerable and uh, is conducive to an optimistic and positive view is Krishna consciousness. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a verse that says, Ayur harati vai punsam udyan astam chayanaso tasyarti yat kshano nita uttama shloka vartaya. The meaning of this verse is that for one who is a materialist, with every rising and setting of the sun, that person becomes one day closer to death. But for a person who is constantly absorbed in Uttama Shloka Vartaya, Varta means discussions. So for one Uttama Shloka is Krishna. So for a person who is constantly absorbed in discussions about Krishna, and Krishna's service, for that person, the rising and setting of the sun do not diminish the uh, longevity of that person. Uh, now, this does not indicate the longevity of the body. The body will get destroyed, undoubtedly. But what it means is that a person who is constantly absorbed in hearing and chanting about Krishna is moving one step closer to eternal life one step closer to freedom from the cycle of birth and death, one step closer to the, ent to the entrance into the spiritual world, to gain the eternal association of Krishna and his pure devotees in Goloka Vrindavan. So this is what makes life positive for us, what makes life optimistic for us. Hmm? Otherwise, everything is simply just uh, the same thing. And we all worry about so many problems that could come. Of course, the notice comes, you know. Krishna gives the notice. There's a little story that comes to mind. There was one man. There was one man who, uh, you know, wanted to conquer death. So he had heard that the god of death is Yamaraj. So he started performing austerities to uh, please Yamaraj. So after a long time, Yamaraj finally appeared before him. And he said, look, 
generally i don't appear before uh, ordinary people like that i only appear before people who are dead just dead or about to die i don't appear otherwise before anybody else but what to do you've done such extraordinary austerities that somehow i'm obliged to appear before you so please tell me what kind of benediction can i give you except don't ask me freedom from death because that i cannot give i am duty bound to give that to everyone so mrityur dhavati panchamaha so death personified also chases everyone out of fear of the supreme lord so yamaraj is also an agent or a representative of the supreme lord so he has to perform his function of chasing people and uh, we are of course being chased and we are running away because we don't want death to catch us so we are running and running and running trying to avoid death and difficulty at all costs so anyway yamaraj said since you've done so much of austerity all right i appeared before you and i'll grant you a benediction so what what do you wish so he said okay now that you're saying that death is inevitable uh so i want the benediction from you that before death comes you'll give me adequate notice so that i'll get time to prepare my family and my job and my business and my finances and i'll also get time to sit down and you know start chanting because so far i'm not chanting uh, the holy name but with the moment i get the notice from you okay now you have to uh, you know this is the notice for your death then i'll start sitting and chanting and prepare for my death so yamaraj said all right i'll give you i'll give you notice so time went by and this man became uh, old slowly slowly you know the uh, hair started turning gray and time passed then his eyes sta- eyesight started getting weaker i said was getting dimmer then he found that he was losing his teeth gradually and as time passed he found he was getting bent over and he needed a stick to walk and time was going on and on like this then he became very weak and one day yamaraj the yamadutas appeared before him and said time to go and yamaraj had also come along with the yamadutas as an exception normally yamaraj doesn't come only yamadutas come not for devotees of course i'm speaking about materialistic people so and then this man who had now become old he was very upset he said yamaraj you are a cheater what have you done you promised me you would send me a notice but you haven't sent me any notice and you just land up like this and tell me you're going to take take me away to your abode that's not done so yamaraj said my dear son i sent you not one but many notices you did what notices did you send the first notice i sent you was that your hair started getting gray the second notice i started sending you was that your eyesight started getting dimmer then i started i sent you another notice that your teeth were falling off and then i start sent you another notice that your joints were getting stiffer and you were not able to sit and i sent you so many notices but you didn't pay heed to any of these notices what did you expect you expected a written notice a letter coming to you that you will pass away so then ultimately yamaraj took away the soul and the subtle body of that person and took him away for the judgment which is his uh, difficult service so the point is that you know krishna through yamaraj is always sending us notices about the passing of time you know time acts inexorably unavoidably in this material world in an acts in a way that will subdue everyone time spares no one you've heard the saying time and tide wait for no person no one right so uh, parikshit maharaj had at least 7 days notice 
you know, he was lucky. But we may not have seven days notice, but we get notice in other ways. What to speak of uh, the notice of getting your hair gray and your teeth falling out and so on. Do you know when the notice starts? According to Vasudev, or according to Krishna actually, I beg your pardon, in Bhagavad Gita, he says, Jatasya hi dhruvam mrityu, dhruvam janma mrityu cha. For one who is born, death is certain. For one who is dead, birth is certain. So the, f- the very first notice that we have of death is that we are born. So if somebody is born, then he or she should understand that the notice has already been given. So one can't complain that someone came without a notice. Hmm? So there is a, um, a nice verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. There was a king called Muchukunda. And he was a great devotee of Mukunda. Mukunda is Krishna. Muchukunda is another name. So he was a very powerful king. And this is described in the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam. So one time when the demigods were having a big battle with the Asuras, the demons, they took the help of King Muchukunda. So King Muchukunda fought very valiantly on behalf of the demigods. And because of his prowess, he was able to assist the demigods in subduing and defeating the demons. So the uh, commander-in-chief of the demigod army, Kartikeya, he was very pleased upon King Muchukunda. And he said, my dear King Muchukunda, please ask us for a benediction. You know, you have uh, selflessly served us. You were unconquerable on earth and you were the emperor of the whole world and you had everything, you had opulence, you had good family, you had obedient subjects, everything was going well for you. But simply because we asked you to come and help, you have come to us and you have helped us for many, many years. Now many years by our calculations in the demigods planets, Kartike explained, is thousands of years for you on the um, earth planet. So whilst you have been here with us, many, many, many generations of your descendants have passed away. So when you go back to earth, you won't find anybody that you recognize there now. So this is how much you have sacrificed for us. So we are very grateful to you and appreciative and would like to offer you a benediction. And in the course of doing that, um, Kartikeya says this verse, Kalo Baliyan Balinam Bhagavan Ishvaro Vyayaha Prajaha Kalayate Kridan Pashu Palo Yatha Pashun. He says, My dear king, Kalha, this time, is Baliyan Balinam. Bali, Balavan, you know, one who is strong. So, Balinam is amongst the strong people or strong categories or entities. Baliyan, so Kal or time, is the strongest amongst the strong. Bhagavan Ishvaro Avyayaha. So Kal is inexhaustible, Avyayaha, because Kal is directly Bhagavan Krishna, Lord Krishna himself. And Prajaha Kalayate and Krishna in the form of time, he controls the living entities in this world. As if in play, Kridan. And how does he control the living entities through the time factor? Pashu Palaha Yatha Pashun. Just as an animal herder controls the animals. You may not see this much in Australia, but in India you may still see it in the villages that you have cow herdsmen who will take their cows and calves and bulls and herd them and take them into the grazing pastures, you know. So they will control their cows or their buffaloes because the buffaloes may stray somewhere else and they will bring them back. So just as a cow herder or an animal herder herds together the animals under his care and takes them from one place where there is good grass available, or there's a water spot for them to drink water, 
So the cow herdsman actually takes them very carefully from place to place. Similarly, the Kal Shakti, the energy of the Lord, the time energy of the Lord, actually um, enables or takes the living entities from one environment or one situation to another, to another, to another, one life to another life. And this continues life after life. Because Krishna is very merciful, so every life that we experience, every birth that we undergo, is a system of purification for us to enable us to realize that this material world is a place of misery. We are not meant to be here. We should not be here. We should try to get out of this material existence and go back to Godhead. So this is actually the mercy of Lord Krishna. So uh, he actually is herding all the different jivatmas, all the spirit souls and taking them according to their karma to different destinations. So inexhaustible time, stronger than the strong, is a supreme personality of Godhead himself. Yes. So this is how we are all playthings in the hands of Kal. You know what the word Kal actually means? Why time is called Kal? Srila Prabhupada in one purport explains that time is called Kal because it constantly changes the shape of everything. It always changes everything. Nothing will remain the same. When we were children, we, we look you know, like children. But now we don't look like children. When we grow very old, we look different. So everything in this world is constantly changing. So because the time factor constantly changes the shape of everything, it's called Kala. So Kala Shakti. Hmm? So just like Muchukunda, so Muchukunda anyway, uh, after he had told, Kartiki had told Muchukunda about this, then he asked Muchukunda for, a, he said, ask for a benediction. And Muchukunda said, well, uh, you know, I have been uh, engaged in battle for such a long time and I'm really exhausted. I'm feeling very, very sleepy. So please give me the benediction that I can sleep peacefully without anybody disturbing me. And I want to sleep for a very, very long time. By then he had come back to earth. Or he was about to come back. He, he was resting somewhere. So, uh, so then uh, Mochukunda then asked that if anybody were to uh, disturb me, disturb my sleep, then please give me the benediction that when I open my eyes, being so disturbed in my sleep, then the person who has disturbed me, his body should burn to ashes. So, so sleepy was he that he asked such a strange benediction. So anyway, this was all ultimately according to the plan of the Lord. So then he lay in a cave, you know, Muchukunda, outside of Mathura, at some distance. And when the time came for Krishna to move from Mathura to Dwarka, Jarasandha had attacked already for the 18th time and another demon called Kala Yavana had also attacked and Krishna at that time walked away from the battlefield, which is not a thing that a warrior is supposed to do. A warrior has to always stay there on the battlefield and, and fight. So uh, when Krishna walked away, of course, devotees glorify him as Rana Chod. Rana means the battlefield, Chod means one who leaves. So, devotees glorify Krishna as uh, one who fled from the battlefield. If anybody else does that, they would be condemned. But when Krishna does that, he is worshipped. So, he came away. He walked and walked and Kala Yavan was chasing him and they came into this cave where Raja Muchukunda lay asleep. And Krishna then disappeared inside the cave. When Kala Yavan came in, he saw someone lying there. He wrongly assumed it was Krishna and he kicked him with all his might. And Muchukunda uh, awoke and he saw this person in front of him and immediately Kala Yavan's body was burnt to ashes. You know, 
So in this way, Krishna accomplished his purposes. Krishna had other things to do. So then he moved on and then actually at that time he blessed Muchukunda. Muchukunda then Krishna appeared before Muchukunda. Uh, Muchukunda introduced himself and understood that this is none other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he asked for pure devotion, which the Lord very happily gave. Similar to Muchukunda, there was also another king called Khatvanga. Mention of him comes also in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the uh, second canto, also in the ninth canto. Just like Muchukunda was called by the demigods to help them in the battle against the demons, uh, Khatvanga Maharaj was also so called. Uh, he fought valiantly on behalf of the demigods. And when time had elapsed and the battle was over, the demigods were victorious. Then the demigods asked Khatvang. He said, uh, they said that, please uh, ask for a benediction. Uh, we are very happy uh, to grant you any benediction that you may want. So uh, Khatvang Maharaj said, um, no, uh, uh, well, I want liberation. So they said, no, accept liberation. You can ask us anything. So he said, okay. So the, uh, then you tell me, how much time do I have left to live in this world? So the demigods informed him, muhurta, you have only one muhurta, just a very short time. We won't get into the technicalities of that because muhurta can mean 48 minutes, it can mean one second, it can mean so many things according to the context. So essentially, uh, muhurta indicates that he had a very, very short time left to live. So, uh, muhurtam ayur nyatvaitya svapuram sandadhe manaha. He said that uh, when he was told that he had only one muhurta left, practically just a moment, a very, very short period of time left, he said, I want to go back to my own uh, palace, svapuram, my own city, sandadhe manaha. So, he went back. And he engaged his mind in Krishna consciousness. He absorbed his mind in Krishna because he got that notice, you know. And then after getting that notice, immediately he didn't waste any time. He didn't bother going to the doctors or the lawyers or the police or anybody else. He didn't go to his family members or his friends. He realized that my death is very close, so I must prepare for my next life. So immediately he sat down and absorbed his mind in Krishna. So this is called Bhakti Yoga, this absorption of the consciousness in Krishna. In the fourth chapter, in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Maya Saktamanaha Partha Yogam Yunjan Madashrayaha Asanshayam Samagram Maam Yatha Jnasyasi Tat Shrinu. So, touch Srinu, please hear, O Arjuna. How Yatha Nyasyasi, how you can know me? Mai Asakta Manaha Partha, O Partha, if you, your mind becomes attached to me and you become fully conscious of me and take shelter of me, Yogam Yunjan Mad Ashrayaha, a Sanshayam, without any doubt, Samagra Maam, you will attain to me. In other words, what Lord Krishna is saying is that if one's mind, if one's consciousness is always engaged in Krishna's uh, thoughts, in, in Krishna's service, in chanting Krishna's name, hearing Krishna's pastimes and so on, then we will be able to know Krishna by this process. So in this way, um, Khatvanga Maharaj understood, he got that notice of only a few minutes, a few seconds, or whatever it was. So he was able to utilize uh, that short time that he had for this purpose. By the way, do you know who Maharaj Khatwanga is? He's, he's an ancestor of Lord Ram. Lord Ram's father was Dasharat Maharaj, as you know. Dasharat's father was Raghu, or um, uh, yes, Aja, Aja, I beg your pardon. Aja's father was Raghu. 
Raghu's father was Dirgh Bahu and Dirgh Bahu's father was Katwanga. So he was an ancestor, four or five or six generations removed. So this Maharaj Katwanga is very famous because of this particular incident. So Srila Prabhupada used to cite uh, this story many times to indicate that um, even if we have less time, let's say someone takes to Krishna consciousness in old age, doesn't matter. But if you take to Krishna consciousness very seriously, uh, then you can make your life perfect. Uh, of course, we cannot outwit Yamaraj. You know, we may try to, uh, even try to get Yamaraj's mercy, but that's the wrong kind of mercy to get because Yamaraj is a devotee of the Lord. So the way to get Yamaraj's mercy is to become a pure devotee of Krishna. You know, there was one person who tried to fool Yamaraj like that. You know, he, he knew astrology and all that, you know. So he, he calculated the time of his death. And he got the exact moment when he would die. So what he did was, he was also a sculptor by profession. So he made many sculptures uh, of himself and all of them were identical to him in appearance and you know they were sitting in that famous pose you know the famous pose of that person sitting like that thinking <laughs> you heard that pose or seen that pose of that philosopher who was sitting like this contemplating on life and so on so uh, he was sitting like that so Yamaraj came at the time of of death for this man and he saw oh my god what is this they all look the same you know who is the real person who is a statue and who is not a statue I can't make out he's done such a good job so Yamaraj being very intelligent understood that he was trying to pull a fast one on him but Yamaraj is too intelligent so he paused for a while and then he said Oh, what a terrible sculptor. He doesn't know how to sculpt statues at all. How terrible. Now, you know, we can tolerate anything in life, but we can't tolerate people criticizing us. So, the moment he heard his own criticism as a sculptor, he was very proud of his own ability as a sculptor. But when he heard this criticism of him as a sculptor, he became enraged. What do you mean? He woke up. Samra said, oh, okay, got you. Come on. <laughs> And then he took him away. He was able to identify him. So <clears throat> the point is we cannot uh, try to pull a fast one on Yamaraj, uh, what to speak of Krishna. So it is better that we just follow Yamaraj's advice. <clears throat> you all know the story of uh, Ajamil, yes? Ajamil had taken the name of Lord Narayan uh, even not intending to do so, he just called the name of his son. <clears throat> uh, but nevertheless, because even unknowingly he took the name of Lord Narayan, uh, he was protected from going to hell. And the Yamadutas were stopped by the Vishnu Dutas and they were quite perplexed and they went back to Yamaraj. <clears throat> And Yamaraj explained to them that, look, you haven't understood the <clears throat> finer aspects of your service. You know, you're not supposed to touch the devotees of Krishna. And then he spoke a, a, a very beautiful verse. Jivvana bhakti bhagavat guna nama deyam chetascha Krishnaya no namatiyat shira ekadapi tan an yadvamasato krita vishnu krityan. He said, Tan, them, an yadvam, bring to me, asataha, those who are asat. Sat means true, or those who follow the path of truth, that means devotees. And asat are materialistic people who don't follow the path of truth, the path of the Lord. So, tan, <clears throat> an yadvam asataha. So, <clears throat> Yamraj told his messengers, bring to me 
those people, those materialistic people who do not, who do the following. So he tells them four things. Look out for these four. Jivana Vakti, their tongues never speak. What? Bhagavad Guna Namadheyam. Bring to me those materialistic people whose tongues never chant the names of Lord Krishna, never speak his glories. That's the first category of person you should bring to me for punishment. Second, Chetaha Cha Nasmarati Tat Charanaravindam. Bring to me those people whose chitta, whose chetana, whose consciousness Nasmarati is not absorbed in Tat Charanaravinda. That means his, Krishna's lotus feet. So bring to me those materialistic people who do not remember Lord Krishna. The third category of persons you should bring to me, Krishna Yano Namatiyat Shira Ekadapi. Bring to me those people who even once do not bow their head at Krishna's lotus feet. No, Krishna, Krishnaya, that means unto Krishna, na namati. Naman means to offer respects or bow down or obeisances. So, Krishna, no namati. He doesn't offer, they don't offer obeisances to Lord Krishna, yat shira, with the head. Ekadapi, even once. So bring to me those people who have not bowed their head before Krishna even once. The implication is that even if someone bows down his head before Krishna even once, then he or she will be protected uh, from being arrested by the messengers of, of Yamaraj. And finally he says, Akrita Vishnu Krityan. Akrita means he, they do not perform. They do not perform what? Vishnu Kritya on their duties towards Lord Vishnu. So those people who do not perform their duties towards Lord Vishnu, bring them to me. In this way, Yamaraj gives a very, very important instruction. Essentially that uh, if we are devotees of Krishna, then we will be always protected. Hmm? Very beautiful thing. So the best way to prepare uh, for our new life in the spiritual world is to follow Yamaraj's advice. If we don't follow Yamaraj's advice, then we will have to see the nastier side of Yamaraj. Because, you know, just like uh, a child, you know, when it follows the mother's uh, instructions, then the mother becomes very loving and speaks very nicely to the child. But when the child deliberately misbehaves, despite the mother having given so many, the ins instructions so many times, then the mother may give some punishment and the child may find that painful. But the punishment that the mother gives is also out of love. Similarly, Yamaraj has already given us so many notices. Krishna has sent many notices. And if we as children of the Lord, uh, do not see these notices, then sometimes Yamaraj may give that little rap on the knuckles, so to speak. And may say, okay, wake up. Hmm? So we will have to wake up at that time. So it is better to pay heed to the notices uh, that Krishna very kindly sends us. It's like the mother repeatedly telling the child, don't touch that knife, don't touch that knife. Yes, but the child still goes and touches. Then the mother punishes the child in some way. Hmm? So, well, uh, our life can become new, can become fresh, can become eternal and full of happiness when we connect ourselves to uh, the supreme eternal, the supreme fresh, the supreme merciful Krishna then everything automatically will work out. Why should we worry and spend so much time for our uh, material maintenance and so on? 
undoubtedly we have to work hard we have to do whatever is necessary for our up- upkeep but we should not be unduly and overly anxious about it we should know how much effort is required for what how much effort for our worldly duties how much effort is required for doing every little thing in our life ultimately it is krishna who provides ananyas chintayanto maam ye janah paryupasate tesham nitya abhiyukta na yoga kshemam vaham yaham so krishna is providing anything everything anyway to all his devotees so we need not be unduly worried since i am somewhat in a story telling mood i might as well tell you one more story okay so you know there was there were these two people who uh, used to go to the king every day for charity the king was a very charitable person but he was also a little proud that see i am giving charity to so many people it is because of me that my subjects are able to survive so these two people used to go and um, they would get some dakshinas from that king every day and they would go back and one day the king asked them he asked he he asked the one, the one of them actually used to always say thank you o king everything is happening in my life only due to your kindness and everything all the gifts that you are bestowing upon me but the other man would never say that he would say you know uh, my gratitude to the lord that he is giving me all these things so the king used to get a little irritated finally he couldn't bear it any longer and he said you know you keep saying that you're grateful to god but you're never grateful to me because i am the one who's giving it to you and instead of thanking me and being grateful to me you just thanking god so and that man said yes he was a devotee so you know and and all the more he was from sydney so naturally he was very strong and faithful and you know uh so then he he stuck to his gun he said yes my lord okay so we'll test you out let us see who gives you uh well now so today i'm not going to give you any any anything in charity but today he told the man who had faith in god he said you know you go by that road the other road the wide road and he sent the man who was grateful to him first ahead and what the king had done was that he had left a, a small you know packet of gold coins on the street so when the first man who was grateful to the king walked he said yes see i, I you know the king is giving i am i can walk even without seeing and he was proud and he, he just walked by he didn't see that packet of uh, you know gold coins and the second man went there and he saw this and he picked it up and he said ultimately god provides everything so the king had intended that uh, the man who went first should actually get the gold coins but because he, he was bewildered by the lord he became proud and he didn't see those gold coins it was the second guy who saw the gold coins even though the king didn't want him to get it but god wanted him to get it and he got it <laughs> so you know material things happen by destiny so even if things that we desire in our material life don't happen we should not be too much disturbed about it yeah why not one more story also so you know one time uh, lord shiva and parvati devi were walking somewhere and they saw this mendicant sitting there uh, he was very poor so parvati devi told lord shiva my lord why don't you give some charity give your mercy to this person you know he is suffering it like anything due to lack of wealth then he'll be happy if he gets your mercy so lord shiva told parvati devi look you know destiny is supreme even if i try, try to help this person it's not in his destiny to receive it so he will not get it so uh, what lord shiva did was he put some he opened a, a watermelon 
and he put many gold coins inside it and he joined up the watermelon in such a way that it was not visible. Uh, you couldn't make out that the watermelon had been cut earlier. Lord Shiva has those yogic powers, he can do it. You and I cannot do it. Once we cut a watermelon, then you can easily make out that it's been cut. So he gave it to that man when they went in disguise and they gave the watermelon and they said, here you are, my man, take this. Uh, so that poor man said, what, a, what kind of a donation is this? You know, I want money. So he went to the market and he sold that thing to the, a trader for a few, uh, you know, paisa or a few rupees or whatever. Or if you're in Australia, you call it cents. So for a few cents, he, he just sold the watermelon and came back. And Parvati said, okay, and Lord Shiva said to Parvati, just see, you know, what's there in destiny is going to happen. So, you know, you gave him these gold coins, I gave him these gold coins, but he wasn't destined to get it. That fellow, the trader there, <laughs> who had no clue about the gold coins, when he opens it, or whoever he sells it to, there's some man, who, you know, in whose destiny these gold coins have been written. So when he cuts it open to eat it, he's going to get this. So therefore, uh, just this morning, actually, I was hearing a lecture of Srila Prabhupada. I listen every day, breakfast and lunch to Srila Prabhupada's lectures. And he was recalling from his young days that there was a Marwadi businessman who was illiterate. And he did not even know how to sign his name. And when he went to the bank, he would ask somebody, there, can you please help me write this on the check? And Prabhupada laughed and said anybody could have cheated him and, you know, they could have written their own name on the check and, you know, given it. But he didn't even know how to sign his name properly. But he was a millionaire. He was very successful in his business. And he says, I know another person who came back after studying medicine in London, after doing his MRCP, and he didn't even have utensils in the house. So he said, just see. He says, by destiny, you know, someone who's illiterate can become a millionaire and someone who's very, very educationally qualified can remain poor. So therefore, Prabhupada said, one should not strive too much for, uh, you know, one should not be too disturbed about material circumstances. They will come, they will go, you know, but we focus on the eternal. Uh, the notices have come to us. Uh, Kala Shakti is acting upon us. None of us is getting younger with the passing day. So if we take to Krishna consciousness seriously, following Yamaraj's advice, then we will get his mercy. You know, there are two kinds of mercy. There is Nishkapat Kripa and Sakapat Kripa. Kripa means mercy. Nishkapat means... Um, Kapat means deceitful. Nishkapat means without any deceit. Uh, and Sakapat means deceitful. So, when the demigods or even Krishna give a benediction, give benedictions to a particular worshipper uh, that are material in nature, okay, may you get a lot of money, may you get material success and so on, that is called the Sakapat Kripa. And such materialistic worshippers of the Lord or the demigods, they thank their worshipable deity for this quote-unquote mercy. That because of your mercy, I got so much money. Because of your mercy, I got this contract. Because of your mercy, I won this election. Yes? So, but that is not really the mercy of the Lord or even of the demigods. The real mercy of the Lord is when one gets free from the materialistic mentality. When one strongly desires to serve Krishna and to love Him. So that kind of benediction is what we should seek. Then we will be the recipients of Nishkapat Kripa. That's the kind of mercy that we need. Yamaraj is a great devotee. So, we can get this mercy from him. He has given us this mercy in the form of these beautiful instructions that I just uh, mentioned earlier. So, if we take to Krishna consciousness, 
then we will conquer time the kala shakti of the lord we will eventually conquer death and at some point either at the end of this life or the next life depending on how seriously we take to krishna consciousness we will reach the spiritual world never have to come back here again in the material world yad gatvana nivartante tad dhama paramam mama krishna says one who attains to my supreme abode never has to take birth here again in this material world so such is the nature of the material world we should recognize it for what it is we should not have false hopes and illusions about happiness here in this world we should understand the reality of the spiritual world and the blissful existence there in eternity and that is how we can welcome our new year 2021 in this spirit unless we look at things from a krishna conscious point of view you know the pessimist uh, there will be a lot of merit in what the pessimist thinks about the world but if we look at it from the point of view of krishna consciousness then we can have Uh, a new year that is filled with krishna consciousness krishna never promises that it will be a new year without difficulties that he doesn't promise but it will be a new year that is full of krishna consciousness and the difficulties that krishna will send into our life will actually be his mercy to uh, draw us lot draw us more and more towards his lotus feet So let us welcome the new year in this spirit. Hmm? So I think oh it's 1:30 already. Okay, so 1:35. So we've had almost an hour's lecture. So I think we'll stop here. Uh so this was a brief talk about how we can in what consciousness we can welcome the new year. Hmm? with every new year we are recognizing knowingly unknowingly consciously unconsciously the passing of time hmm? hare krishna so what i'll do is that uh, if there are any questions i'll take them and then we'll uh, bid goodbye to our facebook viewers and then i'll spend more time with all of you on the zoom Okay so are there any questions Yes please Well actually you see these these are not ordinary personalities. Um okay I think for the sake of the Facebook uh people I should repeat the question. The question is that I'll try to just succinctly say it. Uh King Katwang or Muchukunda they uh serve they perform service for a very long period even though it was kind of in a mode of passion. but how is it that they were able to come back and immediately just perfect their life in such a short time 
Yes. Uh, the answer is that they were already devotees. They already understood the importance of this. But they were engaged in various other activities. Um, and therefore, when the time came, they were able to do it. If we are not practicing on a regular basis, then at the last moment, we will not be able to suddenly think of Krishna. And that's not going to happen. Um, we saw in that story that I narrated about the man trying to get a notice from Yamaraj. He wanted a little notice so that he could start chanting. If he got one week's notice, then he would sit down and start chanting. But it doesn't work like that. So whatever point in time we get Krishna consciousness, we should start. And, um, and then as we practice, then this practice will come to our aid in times of difficulty. We will be able to spontaneously remember Krishna at that time. So because Khatvanga Maharaj was already an elevated devotee, so he was able to surrender to Krishna at a moment's notice. He just dropped everything and simply focused his mind on Krishna. Now, that's not possible for an ordinary person, but Prabhupada encourages and says, yes, we should uh, follow in the footsteps of Maharaj Khatvanga and practice hmm? Yogam, Yunjan, Madashraya. Yeah? So one should practice that kind of bhakti yoga, then practice makes perfect. Uh, sorry, second question was uh, dying at home, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it depends. Wherever one is most Krishna conscious, you know, generally uh, better in a hospital, you don't know what the situation is going to be. And we don't know where we will be when we leave. So it doesn't matter. Uh, for a devotee, it really is not so important. Although, of course, if you can leave in a holy day and a holy place and that's wonderful that's really good but so many great devotees have left at, at times and places that may not ordinarily appear to be very auspicious because Krishna consciousness is transcendental to uh, auspiciousness and inauspiciousness Krishna consciousness is the highest and most auspicious activity so if anybody is Krishna conscious regardless of where he or she is that person will attain to the perfection of life. Okay? So here there are some questions on the chat. Uh, first from Rugank, which says, the four things Yamaraj mentioned regarding whom to not bring to his court could be applicable to yogis as well because they also worship Krishna, bow down to him. Is this correct? Yes. Hmm? Actually, anyone uh, who slightly becomes a devotee also Bhagavata Gita, Kinchita Dita, Ganga, Jalalava, Kanika, Pita. Yes, you know that verse. Sakritapi Murari Samacha, Triyatitas Yamina Nacharcha. So there's a verse like that which says that um, if you study a little bit of Bhagavad Gita every day, Bhagavad Gita, Kinchita Dita, even a little bit of Bhagavad Gita you study every day. Ganga jal lava kanika pita. If you drink a little bit of Ganga jal in the palm of your hand every day, Sakrit api murari samarcha. Even once or even casually you worship Murari or Lord Krishna. Triyate tasya. If you do these three things, then yamena na charcha. You don't have to get into arguments with Yamaraj. Meaning that at the time of death, you don't have to say, Why have you come to me? You know, please give me another two years to live. You don't have to worry. So Yamudutas will not trouble you. So like that, uh, whether it's a yogi or, uh, you know, just a basic devotee, if they're somehow or the other bowing their head to Krishna, chanting Krishna's names, you know, then uh, Krishna protects them. And eventually, when they become pure devotees of the Lord, then of course they will go back to the spiritual world. So, another question from Ankit. Uh, when Yamaraj mentioned four characteristics of people who should be brought to his court, how shall we understand his instructions? 
Shall we take it literally? Shall we take it as a principle? Or shall we take it as Yamaraja's bhava for Vaishnavas? Uh, well, we have to take it basically as all three. Now, um, there may be millions of people who have bowed down their head to Krishna sometime. So maybe the Yamara, Yamadutas may come, may not come. But the point is, as it happened in the case of Ajamil, that the Lord protects such devotees. We should not think these things are exaggerations. Although they may not happen for every single individual, but these are not exaggerations. They are matters of principle that and this appears in the Srimad Bhagavatam very clearly. Because Ajamil had said this, has said Narayan, so one holy name of the Lord is enough to destroy millions of sins. So yes, so we should we should take it as all three. And then invoking the Kaimutya Nyaya principle, which means the if for this you get this much benefit then for that you get how much more benefit. If even somebody casually serves Krishna in this way, he or she is protected uh, by being, from being arrested by the Yamadutas. What to speak then of the sincere devotees of the Lord who are chanting it with, with faith, with determination and, and using all their time to serve Krishna. What to speak of them. Right? Okay, so I think we'll take leave of our Facebook guests here. So thank you very much. And we, for those of you on the Facebook, I wish you all a very happy new year. By happy new year, I mean a Krishna conscious new year. Um, material things may be up and down, as is the nature of this world. Uh, but if we remain steadfast in our faith, in our practice of Krishna consciousness, we will be protected. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna.